Now, what's that you've seen just now? Something's bubbling up on some surface, hard to understand, is it? So, what it is, is um, I'll start from um, the start. Uh, you know, when a manufacturer makes a carbon ring, or any carbon part for that matter, what they do is they put it into a mold, right? And then they create pressure so that the carbon part fills in all of the gaps. Um, and for them to do that, they need to pump the air in, in one way or another. So the way they usually do it is they take um, sort of like a plastic straw and they use it to inflate that carbon part inside of a mold, right? So what has happened in this, in my EIE wheels that you can see at the back is they have used a straw that's too big. <laughs> That's clearly a design fault, in my opinion, it's a bad fault as well. Um, so, they're trying to achieve a no-hole car carbon ring bed, right? For them to do it, ideally, what they should have done is they should have um, used a small straw to inflate the rim inside the mold frame and then um, take it out, you'll have one hole which you will then later use as your valve hole for the rim. And this way you will have an ideal rim, no extra holes or anything like that. Good to use for tubeless for example. But uh, in this case what they've done is they have used too big of a straw, which is way too big to then use it as a valve hole <laughs> because the valve will just drop through it completely so they thought okay what we will do is we'll just not think too much about it we'll just use some sealant seal the hole with the sealant there's no hole anymore right we'll drill another hole next to it and that hole we'll use as a valve hole yeah Okay, this could work. Apart from looking ugly, you would think that, yeah, probably this could work. I mean, it's ugly from an um, um, industrial design point of view as well, as just looks. And when I got the rim, I have asked the manufacturer, okay, I can see there's uh, another hole here which has been sealed, a really big hole. What's the story with that? Because when I bought the rim, no one has told me about that. So that came as a surprise. And they said, oh, no, do not worry about that. You know, we've used too big of a straw for the mold. We have sealed the hole. That's exactly it. You'll never have any problems with it. I said, but what if it will, if it will um, leak? air. They said, no, 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 it's been sealed properly, no problem with that. Okay. So I've started using the wheel and sure enough, it started leaking air. So what's happening now is um, the air in a small, tiny microscopic hole at the edge of that sealed old hole, it just escapes the um, tire slash rim system and it gets inside of the rim okay now it gets inside of the rim unfortunately that rim other side you know where there's a valve and where there's spoke holes it's all sealed properly on that side so now what's happening is that air escapes the tire becomes deflated, it's a slow leak, you're not able to use the tire, you need to pump it up a little bit. And 
it was hard at first to understand the way it's actually leaking. But then um, I found that, what you've seen in the video in the beginning. And so the air escapes, it creates air pressure inside the rim. Now this is really dangerous, because what could happen is the rim isn't designed to hold the pressure the same way as a tire. If the pressure is high enough inside of the rim, there will be a catastrophic failure for sure. The rim will just explode. Carbon fiber is a very strong material. It's very hard to break, but the thing is that it's hard to break in a way it's designed not to break. But the carbon rim isn't designed to hold pressure in the same way as um, your tire would or the rim bed would. So the inside of the carbon rim is just not designed for those pressures and for that air. Um, what have I done after I've discovered that? I came back to the manufacturer, I said, hey, look, there's a problem. There's an air escaping. Obviously you haven't sealed it properly. Just as I've told you in the beginning, just when I got the wheel initially, this is the problem. This is exactly the problem I feared for. Now what do we do with it? They said, yeah, well, okay, we have a couple of options. You can um, just get a discount for those wheels and then just fix them yourself, like maybe seal them a little bit better than what we have done. Or you could send them back to us and then we will um, get you new ones. But the problem with it sending back is that they didn't really want to cover the full expense of the shipping costs and then um, also that would leave me for without the wheels for an unknown period of time even if they would decide to fix it and send me back the new wheels so I didn't really want to do that in the end what I've done and how I fixed it is I've just used some silicon sealant on top of the air sealant now this, this is a bit of an ugly fix not what you would expect on expensive wheels like that, but we'll have to give it a try, see if it works or not, and if it doesn't, maybe come up with another solution, but this is just all the subject. The main topic is how would um, a proper respected manufacturer do something like that? Okay, you messed up with um, a bigger straw, right? Just take responsibility for it. Don't shift it to the customer. That's what I'm um, a bit upset about, you know. It's not just um, some cheap, you know, AliExpress manufacturer which sells, sells carbon rims for like $50 or $100. This is a proper manufacturer who wants to be up there where the light bicycle and fast sports um, who in their turn aspire to be something like you know big wheel manufacturers the A brands so yeah that's really disappointing their communication with the, their customer support wasn't pleasant at all uh, well in the end, they did provide me a small partial refund, so I thought, okay, well, that's good enough. There's really nothing you can do because even when you buy something locally, you have to fight for it. But if you buy something overseas, it's even worse. So, yeah, just a little update, I guess. And also, if you have a design flow like that, just what to expect, I guess. If you will start getting a slow leak, you could look into that direction. 
because first I thought, oh, okay, maybe the ties didn't seal well. You know how the ties usually don't seal at the edge of the tie or maybe where they connect to the rim, but obviously it wasn't that. And another thing is that if you try to, if you don't know how it's losing air, you know, and you try to seal it with your normal tie sealant, what could happen is that tie sealant will eventually escape into inside of the rim and just gather there. And how do you fix that? You accumulate that dry sealant inside of the rim and then there's no way to take it out of there. It will just be trapped there forever. That's it. Hopefully those videos will come more often now.